is cosine of that number milliamps. So it's going to vary as a milliamp, right? 28.7. Does that make, make sense? I just went over three spaces. And if I want to know what is the current in two seconds, I can take the cosine of that again, cosine of uh, 22,941.57 times 2 times 28.7. So uh, it's going to be uh, I at t equals to 2 is going to be negative uh, 28.24 milliamps. So the current is going to be uh, negative, okay, and it's going to be almost equal to its maximum value, which is 28.7. Any questions so far? Okay. So the, the mechanical equivalent of the current is like the velocity. So it would be, the, let's say, in the physics one, I would give you x as a function of time, the x of the block. You would take the derivative, you would get the velocity, and then if you take the derivative again, you get the acceleration, right? And then the derivative of the i, the i dt, we don't really give it a, a symbol like a. But the vl depends on the i dt, the voltage across the inductors, you see? Uh, yeah, the, ne the negative just sign just means it's the opposite to the initial direction, whatever the initial direction is. Right now, it doesn't necessarily mean counterclockwise or clockwise, you know. Whatever the, however the current is set up uh, depends on how the battery is set up. But the current direction negative just means it's opposite to the, how the battery is set up, you know. Okay, then when we want to know the VL, the voltage across the uh, inductor, okay, then VL is going to equal L di dt. So that's like the equivalent of the acceleration. So you take the derivative of this again. So uh, we could take the derivative of this. Again, the 22,000 comes out one more time. So that's going to be a pretty big number now. And the L is 9.5 millihenries. And then the derivative of this, you get... 0 0.0287, and then another 22,000 comes out. And then now the derivative of the cosine is negative sine. So I have to have a negative sine of that thing, okay? Let's go over here. Okay. So let's see the, what's that? 9.5 times 10 to the power negative 3 times 0 0.0287 times 22,941.57, 6.25, huh? Everything, so it ended up being a decent number. It's not that large. 6.25, well actually, that makes sense because the VC is 6.25 sine. So what am I saying? Of course it should be like that. I was for a second, uh, for a second I was saying, oh yeah, that's cool. That makes sense. You know, I, I didn't really catch the, the connection here, but uh, that whole thing should come out 6.25 because that's the maximum voltage. So. sign of, I won't rewrite it again, that thing, you see. So uh, you can see the voltage across the inductor pretty much looks like the voltage across the capacitor except with a negative, uh, right? So the uh, voltage of the inductor is going to be equal to what? Uh, at two seconds it's going to equal what? Well, it's going to just equal the opposite of this because it's pretty much the same function except with a negative. So it's going to equal 1.11 volts. 
So at t equals to 2 seconds, at that split second, voltage across the C is negative 1.11. Voltage across the inductor is 1.11. OK? Now, notice that if you add them, what do you get? Now, does that mean that the total voltage of the circuit is zero? Wait, you, be told, you told me that it's 6.25 volts is the, the DC voltage, right, battery. Shouldn't you just be able to add them and get 6.25? Why is it canceling? The answer is you can't just simply add them. This is an AC circuit. In DC, yeah, your voltage across the, them adds up equal to the voltage of the battery. They're out of phase by 180 degrees. This is negative 6.25. This is 6.25. So how can I rewrite the voltage of the inductor if I want to rewrite it as a sine function without the negative? Sine of this whole thing, the omega t, plus what? Pi or negative pi. In other words, the voltage of the inductor is out of phase from the voltage of the capacitor by 180. So the graphs would look like this. The voltage of the capacitor is a sine function. It's a straight sine function. So it goes up, starts at 0, goes up like this. The voltage of the inductor is the negative of that. So it goes down like this. And, well, of course they cancel each other when you add them. Zero, you get zero. But you, that doesn't mean the, there's no, the battery is zero. You, know, you simply can't add them. So they're out of phase by 180. OK, cool. So that's that. <clears throat> OK, now the next question, part C, says, what is the energy in the inductor? What is the energy of the capacitor? Remember, they give energy to each other. So energy of the capacitor is Q squared over 2C. So again, you can take the general function that we got and square it, divide by 2C. So uh, really, once you got this thing, you pretty much have the whole answer. You know, So well, 1.25, and then remember that it's a micro squared divided by 2 times C times sine squared of that thing. OK? So what is that there? And then the power of 10 is still a micro, right? So sine squared of this thing times a microjoule this time. Microjoule. And if I want to know the energy at t equals to 2 seconds, then I could put 2 over there again, and then take sine of that. So sine of, uh, what was the number? 22,941.57 times 2 square it, multiply it by 3.55, microjoules, OK? Then the uh, uh, energy of the inductor, half L I squared. So you get the current function that we had. You square that. So now L was 9.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And what was the current? Do I have it somewhere here? I think I erased it. Uh, Can someone give it to me? Let me just rewrite it here. I was uh, the, what was the general uh, current function? Uh, 